ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टूडेज रीडिंग फ्रॉम रामायण द स्टोरी ऑफ लॉर्ड राम एट द मोमेंट वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम युद्ध कांड वी गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम येस्टेज session so lord ram and the monkeys sena and uh, lakshman ji they are all uh, by the ocean now they have to cross the ocean to reach lanka and we'll continue from there Because of my mildness and forbearance the ocean considers me to be important thus he will not deign to come before me Lakshman give me my bow and I will teach him this ocean a lesson watch as I dry up the water then the monkeys can march to Lanka on foot without difficulty his anger blazing like fire Ram strung his mighty bow and twanged it powerfully causing the entire earth to tr- tremble Ram shot the arrows deep into the water agitating the entire ocean so the entire earth to tremble Ram shot his deep arrows deep into the water agitating the entire ocean causing high tossing waves and terrifying the entities living within including nagas and rakshasas then as he invoked his supremely powerful brahmastra lakshman put his head on ram's bow and said by dear brother please restrain your anger and do not release any more arrows surely there must be a more noble means for drying up the ocean and facilitating the monkeys to cross over to lanka even the great brahmarishis from their vantage point in the sky were terrified to see ram's uncommon exhibition of anger ignoring R- lakshman's plea Ram picked up the brahmastra arrow and threatened the ocean i will not dry up all your water so all the remains that remains is a desert of sand o god of the sea since you are so proud to render service unto me i shall utilize my own prowess so that the monkeys can cross the to lanka on foot as ram drew his bow taut heaven and earth began to tremble and darkness enveloped the sky celestial winds raged furiously uprooting gigantic trees and tearing off mountain peaks lightning streaked across the sky as did hundreds of meteors while thunder reverberated in all directions the ocean overflowed its limit by 80 miles filling all living beings with terror still ram remained unmoved fixed in his determination Suddenly the ocean god rose up from the water and appeared before Ram surrounded by many serpents with flaming hoods as giant alligators tortoises and fish were thrown up by the billowing waves the ocean's presiding deity stepped into the shore onto the shore followed by the presiding goddesses of such rivers as Ganga and Sindhu decorated with a garland of red flowers and golden ornaments dressed in bright red cloth and encircled by clouds and wind the ocean personified approached ram with folded hands saying o oh, all pervading per supreme person we are dull minded and did not understand who you are but now we understand that you are the supreme person the master of the entire universe the unchanging and original personality of godhead the demigods are infatuated with the mode of goodness the prajapatis with the mode of passion and the lord of ghosts with the mode of ignorance but you are the master of all these qualities o gentle descendant of the raghu dynasty the earth water fire air and ether are all eternally imbued with their natural char- characteristics as a great reservoir of water i am by nature unfathomable and impossible to cross i cannot be otherwise o ram it is for you alone that i will make a special concession enabling you to cross my waters my lord you may use my water as you like indeed you may cross it and go to the abode of ravan 
who is the great source of disturbance and crying for the three worlds. He is the son of Vishrava, but he is condemned like urine. Please go to kill him and thus regain your wife Sita, O great hero. Although my water presents no impediment to you, to your going to Lanka, please construct a bridge over it to spread your transcendental fame. Upon seeing this wonderfully uncommon deed of your lordship, all the great heroes and kings in the future will glorify you. If you construct a bridge, I shall make it float by bearing its weight with my energy. Thus, your vast army of monkeys can attack Lanka and you can recover your dear wife Sita. Standing with Brahmastra arrow drawn back to its full length, Ram said, Please tell me where I can release this arrow for having fixed it upon my bowstring. I am unwilling to withdraw it. The ocean personified replied, To the north is a holy place known as Drumkulya, where a fierce tribe of sinful thieves called Abhirs, Abhirs now live. Because they drink ocean water there, I have become repulsed by their sinful touch. O my Lord, I would be very pleased if you would let your powerful arrow fall there. Ram released his arrow as requested, making it fall at Drumkulya. The arrow pierced through the earth and brought all the water from Ras Rasatal gushing up through the crevice, causing the entire subterranean region to dry up. The place where the arrow fell then became known as Marukantara. And Ram gave it the following benediction. This land will become verdant with fruits, honey and all varieties of herbs. It will be excellent for raising cows and those who reside here will have few diseases. The ocean personified then said, My dear Ram, here is Nal, the son of the celestial engineer and architect Vishwakarma. This powerful monkey is your great devotee. Indeed, he is as talented as his father. He can oversee the construction of your bridge as I allow it to float upon my waters. The presiding deity of the ocean disappeared null, then came before Ram and after offering his obeisances, he said, Forbearance, conciliation and gifts are wasted upon persons who are ungrateful. I know that Varun has granted you the passage only out of fear and punishment and not from a sense of gratitude. My Lord, long ago my father Vishwakarma awarded my mother the benediction that she would have a son equal to him in all respects. For this reason I possess all, the Vis all of Vishwakarma's architectural and engineering skills. I am quite capable of building the bridge. Although I have these talents, no one knew of them before, because no one had asked me about them. I do not like to speak of my own abilities. May I suggest that the monkeys start gathering the building materials so that work can begin, uh, begin at once. Under Ram's direction, millions of monkeys began the construction and some entered the forest in search of materials. After tearing up great rocks, trees and entire mountains, they brought them to the shore through the use of mechanical contrivances. Then, as the huge stones and trees were thrown into the ocean, the water splashed high into the sky, creating a magnificent scene as the rocks miraculously floated. The monkeys tied them together with heavy ropes and vines, making sure they were properly placed. While the construction was going on, Vibhishan and his ministers kept guard at the shore. Hanuman also carried boulders and threw them into the sea. While doing so, he happened to see a squirrel kicking dust into the ocean in an attempt to assist the Supreme Lord. Move out of the way or you'll get hurt, Hanuman told the squirrel. We are carrying huge boulders. What will your little dust accomplish? As soon as Hanuman said this, Lord Ram appeared and rebuked him, saying, Why are you saying this? Both the squirrel and you are serving me. Although you are lifting mountain peaks and he is moving small grains of sand, you are both doing your best. I therefore consider your service and his service of equal value. So such a big lesson given by Lord Ram to all of us that Everyone's service is huge in the eyes of Lord 
So we should never look upon anybody else's devotional service because everybody's services has got a big meaning in Lord's eyes because everybody is trying their best. In this way the bridge was constructed. It was 100 yojans long and 10 yojans wide. The surface was made smooth by placing, placing the trunks of trees against one another. It was then covered over with the tops of branches full of blossoming flowers. Now, in the footnote, there's a beautiful uh, comment given by Srila Prabhupada written and I will go through that. Srila Prabhupada comments, One feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Lord Ramchandra is omnipotence. The Lord can act with, in, without regard to material impediments or inconveniences but to prove that he is the supreme personality of Godhead and was not merely advertised as Godhead or elected by a popular vote he constructed a wonderful bridge over the ocean nowadays it has become fashionable to create some artificial God who performs no common uncommon activities a little magic will bewilder a foolish person into selecting an artificial god because he does not understand how powerful God is. Lord Ramchandra, however, constructed a bridge over the water with stone by making the stone float. This is proof of God's uncommonly wonderful power. Why should someone be accepted as God without displaying extraordinary potency by doing something never to be done by any common man? We accept Lord Ramchandra as a Supreme Personality of Godhead because he constructed this bridge and we accept Lord Krishna as Supreme Personality of Godhead because he lifted Govardhan Hill and he was only seven years old. We should not accept any rascal as God or an incarnation of God for God displays special features in his various activities. The activities of the Lord are not common. They are all transcendentally wonderful and not able to be performed by any other living being. The symptoms of the Lord's activities are all mentioned in the scriptures and after one understands them, one can accept the Lord as He is. We'll continue the reading again. The demigods and great rishis assembled in the sky to behold the wonderful bridge spanning the deep shimmering ocean. Sugriv then requested Ram and Lakshman to mount the backs of Hanuman and Angad. Soon thereafter, the entire army, consisting of billions of monkeys, began to march. Upon reaching Suvela mountain at the far shore of Lanka Island, the monkeys became thrilled. As Sugriv set up camp, all the great demigods and rishis came and individually bathed the king and the monkeys with water from the sacred rivers, blessing the king to obtain victory. Ram then embraced Lakshman saying, Make certain that the army stays on constant alert for I perceive evil omens foreboding the destruction of many great heroes among the monkeys, bears and rakshasas indeed. Just see how the fierce winds stir up the clouds of dust. There are tremors in the earth and dark clouds are raining blood. The evening twilight is heavy, heavily tinged with red and the animals crying out pitifully. O Lakshman, I think we should immediately begin our march on the city of Lanka. Thus at Ram's desire, the army of monkeys departed as they drew near Lanka and Rakshasas could hear that their loud roaring while looking at the golden city magnificently perched atop Trikut mountain, Ram thought only of Sita, imprisoned within. Ram then ordered the commanders to arrange the army in a human-shaped sh formation with himself and Lakshman at the head. As they approached Lanka, the monkeys took up great trees and mountains peaks with, while Ram sent orders to Ravan to release Sita or prepare for death. The monkey chiefs released the Rakshas messenger in the form of a bird who immediately went to Ravan. When the Rakshas uh, king saw how Shuka's wings have been, had been cut off, he laughingly inquired, Who has done this? Shuka replied, I delivered your message to Sugriv, but the monkeys captured me and civilly beat me. Then they cut off my wings. It was only due to the mercy of the virtuous Ram that I was released. 
O king, the army of monkeys has already arrived here to rescue Sita. You must return her to Ram or immediately attack the hordes of monkeys before they swarm over the boundary walls. Ravan angrily replied, I will never give up Sita. I will kill Ram and all his monkey soldiers. However, I am quite amazed that these monkeys could build a bridge across the ocean. I want you and Saran to disguise yourself as monkeys and secretly enter the enemy's ranks to estimate their strength. Shuka and Saran obediently went to the monkeys camps because of the vastness of the monkey army now spread throughout the forest, mountains and along the shore. The two spies could never even begin to estimate the number of soldiers as they moved along. However, Vibhishan identified them as disguised Rakshasas and captured them, taking them to Ram. Afraid for their lives, Shuka and Saran stood before Ram with folded hands pleading, We have not come here of our own accord. We were sent by Ravan to ascertain, ascertain the strength of your army. At this, Ram simply laughed and replied, If you have accomplished your mission, then you can return to Ravan at once. However, you have not yet completed your observations. Then you can continue your tour without fear, guided by Vivishan. In return for our hospitality, I only request you to deliver this message to Ravan. Accompanied by my army of monkeys, I will destroy Lanka and kill all the Rakshasas. Out of gratitude, Shuka and Saran offered obeisances to Ram, saying, "My, May you be victorious. Then they returned to Ravan and explained we were captured by Vibhishan, but then mercifully released by magnanimous Ram. Due to the army's vastness, it was impossible for us to estimate the extent of it. However, we can assure you that Ram, Lakshman, Sukriva and Vibhishan can uproot Lanka and carry it away if they choose so. Even without the help of the other monkeys, indeed, we are convinced that Ram could destroy Lanka and all the Rakshasas single-handed we advise you to return Sita to Ram and establish an alliance with him. Ravan replied, I will never give back Sita even if all the demigods and demons combine together to attack me. You only speak such rubbish because you are afraid of being tormented by a few monkeys. What have I got to fear? Ravan climbed to the roof of his palace, accompanied by his two spies, hoping to gain a good view of the enemy. Ravan then asked Saran to put out the chief monkey. Saran showed his master all the great heroes including Anuman, Sugriv, Angad, Nal, Menda, Dvivida, Sweta, Panasa, Vinta, Gavaya and finally Dumra, the commander-in-chief of the bears. And his younger brother Jambavan Saran also described their physical characteristic, characteristics and praised their incomparable prowess. The monkey army was so expansive that in order to describe the extent of which Saran first had to explain the Vedic system of counting, he explained that 100,000 is 1 lakh, 100 lakhs equals 1 crore, 1 lakhs of crores is called a sanku. And one lakh of Sanku is called a Mahashanku. One lakh of Mahashanku is called Vrinda, and one lakh Vrindas is called Padma. One lakh of Padmas equaling Mahapadma, one lakh of Mahapadmas is called Kharva, and one lakh of Kharva is Mahakharva, one lakh of Mahakharva is called Samudra. 1 lakh of Samudras is called Oga and 1 lakh of Oga is called Mahoga. Saran then explained that Ram's army of monkeys consisted of at least 100 crores of Mahogas of soldiers. Seeing Ram, Lakshman and other monkey heroes, Ravan became enraged as Shuk and Saran became, hung their heads. Ravan chastised them severely, trying to restrain his anger. He said, you are supposed to be my ministers. Yet you are ignorant of politics and, and are praising the enemy. Your speech is most unpalatable. I must be fortunate indeed to have retained my sovereignty for so long guided by such ignorant fools as you. How can you speak so foolishly? Have you no fear for death? It is only the memory of your past service that keeps me from killing you this instant. Shuk and Saran became 
ashamed to hear Ravan chastise them this way, hoping to pacify their master. They shouted, O king, may victory be yours, and then they departed. We'll continue our reading from here onwards next time. Wish you all a happy week commencing from tomorrow. Hare Tatsad and Hare Krishna.